Conservation Commission meeting is now open and it's being recorded for RCTV, Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. You can view it. Videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob. Check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. And the first item on the agenda is the Perico property. Uh, notice of intent, 95 Walker Crook Drive, map 13, lot 2. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Mike Lamb with the Warren Camera Group. I'm a special engineer and project manager. We have to share the plan. So I was feeling left out. You don't want that. No, neither do I. <laughs> So last last year we, we, we opened the hearing, we gave an overview of the project, uh, addressed most of the concerns, and there were a few outstanding issues, so we decided to, to leave the hearing open, and, and while the draft order of conditions was prepared, and then we had a chance to review that, um, and make, make a few modifications. And so we're here tonight to just to, to finish this up, and I'll, I'll just quickly go through uh, what has changed in the plans, and then I can touch touch on some of the operation and maintenance okay. items as well. So, on the plans, I'll just kind of spin through. If you go to the next sheet, um, this there's a couple items that were discussed last time. One of them is there's a fence enclosure right here next to the building um, that was just it, it was for the, the prior use. And the equipment that was in there is no longer in there. Uh, there's a concrete pad in there. The fence is, is kind of falling apart. So the owner has elected to take down the fence. So we've included that on these plans. So that'll just be a, a removal of the fence, no disturbance of the earth around it, you know, right next to the wetland. So just, just take the fence down, get that out of there. And also that, you know, that happens to also be in the easement that runs along here, the town easement. So it's a benefit for that as well. Um, and the other, the other piece too was there's a tall uh, gas station sign up in here, old old sign and in disrepair, and that that also will be coming down as well. So those are a couple of the existing condition items that were were discussed previously. Um, do you want to go to the next? Point? Can I just ask one question? Yeah. Um, is the fence in the pad, but the pad is staying. Pad is staying. Okay. It actually yeah. says that on the plan. Concrete pad to remain. So thanks. I tried to be pretty clear on that, yeah. <laughs> just so everyone knew what was happening. These, we just got these plans. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's a, just so there's, we don't even have to worry about noting it, and we can always go back to these. And, and one more. And the, the plan that we just saw was the site prep and demo plan, and that's where those are called out to be removed and everything, like, like you said. And so on the site plan here, there was, there was a couple items that were, that were still open regarding in, in the planning board process too that, that they were conditioned during that hearing. So one of them was that we added a yield sign to this sign post here. So for vehicles coming down this way, which is the exit, they know to yield to the oncoming traffic from the adjacent site that shares this uh, exit drive here. So we've added that to this plan. The other uh, difference here would be light pole locations. So there's there have been some minor shifts on the light poles to uh, eliminate um, any spillover into the wetlands. So instead, instead of the light pole being up in this part of the parking lot, it is now across the way here. This one right here remained, um, although the heights of the light poles did come down a little bit to accomplish that, that lighting effect. And then this, there used to be a pole in this island, and that actually got pulled over into the parking area here, which which would limit the light along along here because when the light was here, it was casting a little bit of light into the weapon right here. So those are a couple of the site plan changes that were that we gone through. And yeah, I'll go to the next plan here. So this, this is the grading and drainage plan, and so none of these none of these. Um, changes really affected any of that. We've already discussed the, the plan for the grading and uh, and the drainage system being maintained. So those were the those are really the plan changes here. And so I can just quickly go through 
a couple of OM items. There was a request from some of the commission members last last week or two weeks ago. And these were just the landscape plan and the lighting plan. Chuck just flipped through that, that also reflect those, those plan changes. So a couple of the issues uh, were also kind of coordinated with the order of conditions that Chuck had drafted. So in this, just kind of just uh, fleshing out a little bit further um, some, of the, some of the items. So on the paved areas, we, we have street sweeping. Um, you know, twice a year between March 15th and November 15th. That that was that was one item that was already in there. But then toward the end of that section on the paved areas, <coughs> this is under the long-term pollution suspension plan. There, there's a sentence at the very end that reads that de-icing products that are considered environmentally friendly shall be used whenever possible. So that's just something in there for the owner to if at all possible to use those types of products to purchase those you know for their walkways and to discuss that with the contractor who will be doing snow removal uh, on the property there was another item that was included in the order of conditions which was around could you actually go check to the um, probably just the grading grading drainage plan going forward Another, uh, and then the front of the site along Walker for Drive, there was a swale in there, so we really wanted to make sure that, that in this in this process here, um, we had the opportunity to kind of put some language in there to make sure that that the swale was maintained and that you know that observations were made of the erosion and everything in in that system, and then so that would be under this drainage inspection item, which was added. So it says that existing drainage trails, pipe inlets, and pipe outlets in the subject property shall be inspected quarterly and following heavy rainfalls, which are defined as one inch or greater. And if pipe, pipe blockages or soil erosion is observed, repair shall be made immediately. So that covers the drainage system for the parking lot back in here, as well as the swale, swale in this location. And then similarly, there are just a couple couple items on the on the uh, construction phase that that were relative to the inspection frequency. So, seeing as this will be a, a, a rather quick project from start to finish, some of the inspections were just bumped up to to daily inspections, just a walk a walk of the site, make sure the silt fence is, is in good repair. And, and just general general site inspection would be done more frequently just because this will be, this will be done over the course of a month rather than for seven months. So um, the, the frequency will be defined. That was essentially it on, on that. So I will leave it at that and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, excuse me, where, where does it say um, uh, daily inspections? Which? Let me check that. Is it under the construction phase, best management plan? Construction plan? phase, yeah. Yes, it is. And the chair. So under the structural practices and silk fence, it's actually on the second page of the plan. Um, it says that uh, item 1B, maintenance and inspection of the site supervisor shall inspect the site okay. daily and shall repair any damage or affected areas. Members of the commission and Chuck, any questions? I have, I have no questions. I have no questions. Um, 
I looked at the order of conditions and you put in uh, a bond of five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, but you said, but we had a little discussion about that. Um, <clears throat> I guess that's up to us. Um, it was just a placeholder, so. Yeah, so I saw that. I, I had some other minor comments to the orders of condition, but nothing that changed it substantially. But um, I, I saw that too. I, I thought, you know, on a project this size, do we typically ask for a bond that size? You know, I, I was just trying to think of if this stopped right in the middle, you know, what, what would we do or what would we have to do? I mean, cur currently it's a paved lot. It's going to be nothing but better at the end of the day. You know, I, I guess. What are we trying to cover ourselves for? Um, uh, any any erosion and, and runoff, I would suspect into the the resource areas um, along the this side. Th there's kind of a it, it's kind of flat, and then it goes down, as I recall. Um, On this side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. From from the parking lot, it does go up, and then it does fall back, but it, it does have a slope upwards. Before it reaches the peak and goes back into the water. I guess. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Is that kind of our standard number? Um, uh, do we ever go less than that? And we'll do that. I think it is kind of a standard number. Yeah. It's a standard starting place. Does uh, they don't need one from engineering? So it's for, this is the only bond. This is going to be the only one coming in it. Okay. And I thought that uh, the worst case scenario for me would the parking area would be pulverized and then. And then the project ended. Yeah, and there would be a lot of cleanup at that. And point. then at that point, you got some. Yeah. And in any, I, I know there is dust control, but sometimes that gets a, away, away from you. You know. Yeah. Then I, I don't. Planting. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I thought that that was more reasonable. We usually have a twenty thousand dollar bond. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I guess I don't have an objection to that then, particularly if it's just our. Uh, kind of our starting point anyway so okay. I don't think we need I certainly don't think we need more than that I was more thinking to go less but um, you folks got the order of conditions and I know you had some were they just editorial yeah they were the, the, I was talking about your lines on the order yeah they were just punctuated questions yeah I mean it was, it was it wasn't anything substantial it was okay. Little, okay. little stuff did um, members of the commission have it Opportunity to review the order of conditions. Yeah, I read it. I didn't have any. I didn't either. Okay. I think between I the submittals and the conditions put in the order, it's all there. Okay. And I didn't have any comments or edits. Okay. Um, Mass Highway does own, uh, own, or Mass DOT really, but owns that that portion of Walker's Brook there, uh, which I was surprised to to see and. And so there's a, I think there's a, an item in there that says they need approval from MassDOT. It includes approval from MassDOT prior to starting the work. Is there ah. a condition? Could you, yeah. They don't need that. That would only be for... New a, curb cut, right? Curb cut. Or and you get the utilities. same curb cut. So, so uh, I... I think it's, it's the same curb, same no. curb cut plus no. just repeating no, it. What's that? I, I, I thought I read it. Exactly because that's why I brought up the question, does Mass DOT actually own Walker's Brook Drive? I, I thought we had... I thought that there was something in there about that. <coughs> um, sorry. I, what route is that? Uh, they get they own they they it's have jurisdiction over oh, 28 but uh, it, it's the highway right away so it's I yeah think but it's, it's got to stop somewhere yeah, I mean it it maybe stops, it's close enough I think it's a hundred feet from the entryway of the of the on ramp so it, they're still I think far enough back the building itself is a hundred feet approximately yeah wide. sorry I'm, yeah I could have sworn there was something in there that says. But that would only be germane if they were changing something with a curb cut in the night. I think so. So they are putting any new, new utilities in I from Walker Court, so if that wouldn't we apply either. Findings area. Yeah, I there, didn't there were that. a couple places we. So we could, we could look through that specifically. So it just says within the right of way. What was that? It's number two if you want to look at that. Did you want to, do you have a comment on? It says, 
so I guess try it, it if, it, if it, you know, if it any work in the right away, you yeah. would have to get approval from uh, MassDOT. So I guess the, the caveat there is you're not proposing to do work in the right away, so you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. That's fine. As long as that's in there. I didn't want it to, to be something that's a... It just covers us in case something happens. Yeah. All right. I think that, you know, I think this is, um, you know, the way it happened, me and we had, a, we had a good amount of time. I had this out to the applicant on Thursday of last week, and they reviewed it with LEC, and it got back to um, your comments came in first, uh, and then, so they've seen your comments, and he just added to them uh, with this. So I think it's been reviewed a lot. Right. I have a motion to. I make a motion to close the hearing for 270. Do we have a number? Yeah, 2700696. 0696. Do I have a second? I'll second it before David All those in favor? <laughs> and I'll make a motion to approve the order of conditions uh, as. To issue. To issue the order of conditions as. Amended or discussed or has discussed yet. <laughs> do we hear a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor. I just want to do that once. I don't want to make a habit of it. <laughs> Are you in? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in. All right. I'm in. All right. We're all set then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you so much. Everybody have a good day. Yeah. You too. All right. We're almost done. Yeah. I will keep going on here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks again, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um... So, the request for determination of applicability for Grove Street Meadowbrook Golf Club, that has been... I think that's going to be... Um, I didn't get any word, so... I mean, it's up to us if we want to continue it to the next meeting, but I didn't, I didn't hear anything. It's really fallen off the back burner somehow. But um, if you do continue it to the next meeting, I could at least reach out to the applicant or to the consultant. Is there a reason we're going on. to continue it to the next meeting? We, well, for what we were asked to do, it's very simple. I think that they're changing the plans, or that was the, that's what was happening uh, before, and so we don't know what the plans will look like, so we can't close our determination. So yeah. we're just doing a determination of applicability for this. But if they're significantly changing it, they're going to at least send us new documents. So ask them if they want us to close this and they reapply or why would they want to do I can it? ask them right what or ask them what they want to do they'll probably continue uh, yeah. and just it's been it's been a while now it must be uh, somewhere in town hall and almost finished I'm not sure I move we continue uh, I mean, I'm just my comment is only because that I, I don't generally get anyone uh, calling me or emailing me and saying that we're going to continue. Like it's the, you know, right. the first thing that the th right. I think everyone's moved on that's involved in this. Yeah. So I'm looking for, you know, I have to go searching so, for what's happening. So eventually we sense. want some closure yeah. on our end. If, if, they're, yeah. if they're not going to continue to respond, there's going to be a point where why can keep on continuing it. Yeah, exactly. Let's that's, just close it. I, I, that's where I feel. I, I think that's a good idea for uh, next week. We can try to reach out to them and just see, and then I, I okay. think yeah, that's a good idea for next week. For now. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. I'm amazed at how much Harry sounds like Anika. Oh, the play. Oh. Um, was there a motion to continue? Mike, I think you made that. Was there a second? No, no. no. Uh, Nika, Nika made the motion. I made seconded. the motion, and, ha and Mike second. Harry made the motion. Thank you. Oh, that's my <laughs> Now all is right with the world. Hardly. <laughs> but I didn't want her to think I was trying to be insulting. Okay. So um, I was going to explore that later. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have witnesses now, so. <laughs> it's all good.
next, next Friday. I'm going to be fine. I don't know. They asked Eddie, he has to go back to me. <clears throat> next item on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability 2018 3. 16 Pine Vale Ave, Map 11, Lot 198, Couliard. And I believe we issued a negative determination last meeting. And uh, Chuck, do you have that? Our signature. I did. Um. Were we waiting on anything from now too to go along with that? Did, wasn't the, didn't you need to have a conversation with Ryan or something? Yeah, we had we had a conversation that was expedited by one of the neighbors who called up and said that uh, the temporary drainage area was actually flooding his backyard. Is and that the gentleman <coughs> looking at the house to the right? The right. Yeah. 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 And I felt that um, if he hadn't called, it would have been worth pursuing to put it put the water back into the wetland back there. I didn't want any issues, and I didn't want an issue every rainstorm. So the decision was made to put it, in the put it into the storm drain. Storm drain, yeah. which then just goes across the street to and the water. And floor. that was part of the conversation with Ryan? Uh, no, Ryan, I talked to Ryan earlier, yeah. and uh, we were going to put it into the wetland. And it was really just that neighbor calling that changed my mind. Okay. Right. It, where was this? On, not on A Street. Pinevale. Pinevale. Pine 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 oh. yeah. Pine Site visits uh, on Tuesday. We went up to 364 Lowell Street. Um, it was kind of a pre construction meeting. It was Anika, myself, Bob, Chuck, Bill Manuel, and several of. Who was the thin gentleman? Uh, what's his name? That did most of the talking at the tailgate? Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know either. He's a nice guy. Seemed like I talked a little bit earlier. You know his name. Told me the name, you I forgot remember. it. You can't remember. That's his name. He's the architect. Um, Is he from William Sparges? No. Mm -mm. Um, film for him. He used to be on this commission. We should know him. That's, I know oh, that. I didn't know that. I never met him. Yeah. You were there, yeah. You had never seen him. I never met him. When was he on the commission? I don't know. That's what so I So it was before me. Yeah, it was before... Maybe, maybe uh, that's not true. I'm not sure. I don't know that, but I was, I was totally used to go. Oh, his name will come to me. No, I'm sorry. But anyways, he, he did a lot of the talking, and um, we reviewed a lot of, um, we looked at uh, kind of where they wanted to start, and there's a lot of water on that left-hand side, or the... East. East side. <laughs> Thank you. Near the neighborhood of it's Plymouth Road. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's still a lot. Of, there's a lot of wet back there. Um, they were talking about um, eradicating or taking out um, the knotweed with um, basically driving a front end loader there and hanging it over, but not taking the loader into the knotweed and you know kind of hand digging it out. There were some deadfalls uh, in that area and Harry. Um, voiced, voiced, um, you know, build manual said, do, do you want us to take this out or the other, the architect said, do you want to take this out or do you want to leave it in? Mm -hmm. um, Harry thought it was a great idea to leave some of it in those areas. Um, in the uh -oh, south, 
along the railroad track. Go there? I'll go there. <laughs> yep. East. Yeah. It would be this along the railroad track there's that the water comes down and then it makes the turn mm -hmm. this way. And they were talking about doing a lot of you know, removing material in that area of that drainage area. The, and there was a lot of water, standing water back there. There's also piles of leaves. I mean, there were piles of leaves all, all along this, this area. Um, I don't believe they've talked to, um, would be the MBTA, about uh, cleaning out that uh, culprit. Oh, they still haven't done that? I don't think so. Didn't we ask to be CC'd on a communi some sort of communication? Wasn't that in the conditions? I think so. I thought they weren't going to touch that. In the earlier conversation, somebody mentioned they weren't going to touch it, but I don't know if... We, I think all we asked them to do was reach out to the MBTA to try to see if they would do something about it. Knowing that the MBTA might not react, but what we asked, I thought, in the conditions was to get a record of them reaching out to the MBTA so sure. at least know that they put in the effort. And if the MBTA doesn't do anything, they don't do anything. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. What's the um, distance on either side of the tracks that the MBTA owns? Is it 50 feet? I don't know. So it's, it's not a small chunk of land. I thought that culvert was critical to de dewatering that area. What can they do? It it's is. Not, it it's is. It's the downstream right. log jam. Eventually, that we were talking about right that makes its way over across the street, over Willow Street, back into the Abajona. Right. That mm -hmm. distance is about 90 feet. From the, from the, the tracks in the center? Yeah, tracks are in okay. the center. Okay. So, I was close, 50 feet. It's not I'm not sure that's standard everywhere, but right there, it's 90 mm -hmm. feet. The rights go down and up, by the way. Especially when it crosses roads. They were trying to put a... Um, it's like 70 feet right there. The utility feed under a railroad track, and they had to actually press a pipe through the road. They couldn't drill it. They could. They had to tress, press a pipe so they didn't disturb any of the earth underneath the railroad tracks because they didn't want to have any movement from the surface that supported the ties. It was pretty interesting to watch them do it. It was 100 feet. They had to literally push this pipe. They had the two jacks and big hydraulic pumps. It was a pretty neat process. It was right outside my office. That's why I got to watch it. Up in um, Acton. They also were talking about uh, re-notifying uh, the butters when they start mm -hmm. the work. <coughs> On Plymouth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be 300 feet from the property lines, so. 300 feet from what property line? The ones highlighted in blue, that's all considered 364 Little Street. Well, it has to be 300, it's not 300 feet across, how could it be? It's 300 foot radius from the property. From the property to, to, to notify, notify butters. Oh, 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 to notify, oh yes, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> So he has the old list. He, um, you've got to. Oh, they've got to get a new assessor's list because there were a couple of property changes on Plymouth Road. Right. Yeah, that's about really it. And he went over how Harry wanted uh, uh, less work done. Keep keep the vegetation. Keep the leaf litter. Um, the leaf litter. Well, he was worried about too much. Uh, Worried about disturbance yeah, in the stream disturbance. along the, uh, you know, the it railroad as much. area. I thought that first pine tree that was down and dead needed to come out. It Sorry, seemed yes. to be right on the right on the edge. Uh, that seemed good. I I, did, I wasn't with you guys when you walked down yeah. further. So if there was stuff down there, we can approach that every day. I mean that that's um, open for everyone to go. You know during you know the hours we couldn't of uh, we couldn't. We had a quorum, so we really couldn't ask questions. Yeah. So maybe it might be in your best interest to go take another look at those trees that are down, further down. Because mm -hmm. um, wasn't there a uh, willow 
willow snag that's down across that wetland there yes, too as well. Yes, there's a snag way way down, almost where it turns. Yeah. They're going to try to establish flow, so that will be removed yeah. for sure. Um, okay, well, that's not what not was easy. said to uh, Bill, so I would like you to take a look at that. Oh, because I wish I could remember that guy's name. Doesn't um, matter, but but it, when that rots out, that will impede the flow. When it gets, right. it's, it's right above the water right now, but when it all rots down, it will start to, I think, have a yeah. problem with the flow. <sighs> okay, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, then we had another site visit. Um, a Mr. Steve O'Neill, a builder that uh, has been before us, I guess, on Pearl Street, uh, talked to us about a couple properties off of Libby Avenue on on A Street and one actually on Libby Avenue. The one on A Street, <coughs> did, did you I got abducted on my way over there. I wasn't able to make it. I showed up late as Steve was leaving. I talked to... Dave about it and Mika, you want Dave? Did you get there? There's a place which they went there. I think I did. I think I did. I don't know if I did. Mr. Brady has a was that at the previous meeting? Yeah. No, no, okay. no, no. We, it just came in, yeah. and um, okay. I got we got handed these. Um, okay, at the site visit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I missed that. Mark. That's but anyway. okay. But anyways, um, this property right here. I saw a copy that Chuck had. Okay. He showed me. They're gonna tear this slopes down. And well, actually put a very large a house like across this. Really yeah, it would be best if you went to the board. Oh, okay. So everyone would know what you guys are talking about. Or I could do it. No. And you can describe it if you want. You can go to the board. I'll do it. Okay, great. <laughs> now I gotta put my shoes on. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna take tear this house down, put a very large house in here. And there'll be a driveway coming in like this. And the wetland, we actually took a 30 foot tape, Chuck and Mr. O'Neill, and pasted off. And about 100 feet is something like in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. There is a tree that they will be removing, but it's outside of our jurisdiction. So we discussed possible minor permits. See where the 100 feet comes? But that's not what we saw on site. We saw that we saw the hill, and we measured from where we were. So, because that would incorporate that tree, which we felt was out. Do oh, you think it's in there? I don't. This is not accurate. We have a disclaimer on this site saying it's not accurate. We were out there. What we did was accurate. Right. Yeah. I thought, I thought we measured it and we thought it wasn't for them. And that, I agree with you. I think that this wetland is back and, oh, I and oh, we're, okay. I mean, 100 I feet is probably you. right, you know, somewhere in here. Mm. Not, not where it was, okay. where it shows right there. All right. Um, so that was pretty straightforward. And then. But that well, current whole area is existing grass. Yes. This, yeah. Yes. This yeah. Is, There's no. I mean, it's is grass. Right. Somehow all of these people are related. <laughs> I don't know, but he we're also all, we're all related. Yeah. He also took us into this property, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, this is all grassed, long mm -hmm. lot, and there are. We also looked at the wetland back here. Mm -hmm. Saw evidence of yeah. skunk cabbage pretty close okay. to this corner, and there are these are all oak trees, and mm -hmm. they wanted to remove all of the oak mm -hmm. trees. Um, there are two within the twenty, what we consider the twenty-five no no vegetation cut down zone, and um, but the rest were definitely within the hundred feet. Now, check. They're, they're all, and, and these are very large 
oak trees and they look to be in other than one maybe they all look to be in fairly healthy condition so obviously they, they just want to take them down because they can't stand the leaves falling they have i no they didn't say a reason um it's just uh the what we heard was there a new owner at the house and with the young it's, children it's they just want to open up the area they want more. Something so that 73 is misleading, um, but it's that's the line where those we thought could, those could be more. that's 35 yeah, feet yeah. away from the well. Yeah. So the blue line is? Where the blue line is, and it, it's uh, oh showing yeah, that really two of the trees that they wanted to take Still, down the, are within 35 feet of the wetland. There's a total of 12 trees that, if you counted every single one, but those, th those two trees um, can't come down under the, under the um, tree policy because they're too, they're too <coughs> um, so they're they're okay with that and they wanted to take the rest of them down so, which are I think nine trees nine which are nine trees nine they're ten, it's ten trees twelve all together no isn't isn't part of our isn't part of our typical discussion about trees just <coughs> if the tree is sick or damaged, if the tree has, is, is kind of posing, I don't mean to use such severe language, but sort of an imminent harm to the house, like leaning in its healthy, but leaning in its general direction. Yeah, if you want that. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of reasons why we would permit um, well, right wholesale our, cutting of, of all these trees. Our policy actually says that it gives us three options but it says any site can be held to a different standard by the conservation commission right so it's it's within <coughs> you know it's within your purview to discuss this and i will bring to your attention that this this is a lot of trees this is probably the most that we've ever been asked to take down that are in my opinion healthy um, one tree was said not to be healthy, but it just had a couple of dead leaders, which you know could be a problem in the future. I, I understand, but it doesn't mean it's going to fall down right. next week. Um, and then we've had a couple other inquiries about three or four families taking down many, many trees. Those applications aren't um, in to me at this moment, uh, and uh, this is the only one that is, you know, considering uh, to take down the 12 trees and under the policy that... And, and let's, just to be clear, they haven't provided an actual reason. They just want they to just take down the to, trees. There is no reason other than, they, you know, they have small children. Mm -hmm. and they want access, they want more access to that back area. That That is what was conveyed to us. Mm. Um, these trees are healthy. They did not look like they were leaning anywhere that would affect anybody's house. Um, right. So Chuck, let's, can we talk about our policy a little bit here? About So, so, they, so our policy allows them to cut those trees, and they can put five hundred dollars to the general fund if they want, or so, yeah. they can replace. The policy is out there for people to uh, request acceptance. It's like a hurdle into tree cutting land, and the application allows you to, you know, jump over the hurdle and be able to take the trees down. And so when this came in, it seemed like a lot of trees and it looked like something that we had to go out and look at anyways because of the other site next to it. And um, what I mean by a lot of trees is it's usually four or less trees that we're asked to cut down. And some of those four trees aren't even six inch or greater. So they're just smaller trees and you kind of work through it and there's not you know, significant specimens out there. Um, so yes, the, the policy as written doesn't cap the amount of trees you can cut down, but it, 
it does leave it to the discretion of the commission to um, allow it. Some but policies I've seen for what it's worth allow a maximum percent of tree removal per year rather than say no or there's X number. They just say if you've got 100 trees on your property, you can cut down 10 or 15 or whatever it is. And that, that can happen every so many years. I don't know if it's two years or five years or what, but I've, I've seen policies like that. I ran into that in New Hampshire. I'm not saying it's better policy. I just, for, for, thought, for, for, for thought food. Wonderful. Well, A position like that would be advantageous. Well, there's another another thought here as well, um, and I'm not even sure whether it was broached, but if these people want to open up their yard, <clears throat> um, uh, I'm sure the discussion could be had if they cut the trees out of the, the middle of the yard to open up their yard. You could also request a replacement of trees that they plant along the perimeter of the yard that would allow them to open up their yard, but then still replace the trees that they cut down. So that's another possibility as well. There's, yeah, there's Some of these trees are at the perimeter, if you look at it. So these trees are the winners of the uh, shading battle. If we plant them at the perimeter of the yard, their new trees would probably die because they're not going to get enough light and shade. I mean, that's a, you know, these are very big trees. They're, you know, stretched up, got the sun. Yep. Anything else, any smaller trees couldn't be planted exactly at the edge. It'd have to come in a bit. So I put the policy up um, and this is, this is what we, we have at the moment. So, Chuck, on commercial uses, have we, I mean, I'm looking at 364 Lowell Street, they're replacing a lot, and, and would they, so the minimum was, the minimum would be 250 and the maximum amount was set the commission's sole discretion. Did we request more? They met the policy one to one yeah. and a little bit more over at Lowell Street. Okay. So within our jurisdiction, they were planting either trees or shrubs. A lot of them were planted in the um, detention basin. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, they, they can use it. It seems to me that what, when we first did this, I thought the um, contractors would have the hardest time, but it, it's it's not how that worked. How they're all when they take down trees to build a house, the landscaping takes care of new trees being planted. At least so far, it's, it actually hasn't even been a year yet. So, um, but they met one to one, and Randall Road met more than one-to-one. -one. Um, so the maximum for this particular lot, if they cut down all nine trees and they contributed to the fund, the maximum would be $500. Mm -hmm. Would be 500 yeah. But Nika brought up an interesting comment the other day over at Lowell Street. Have we replanted any trees that told people we need to replant? Is that a process that has not? Have, has any of that? Has I, I kind of, I, 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 I deduce from I your comment that can, it hasn't. I don't think we know for sure if any, how many additional trees have been planted as a result of the fund. Can I? I mean, if, if we ha we have a policy that says you, you can replace a tree if you cut it down, right? Mm -hmm. How do we police whether or not it gets replaced? 
So if the homeowner plants the tree himself, herself, um, they give me a call, I go out and verify that it's been planted. They can do that with a picture too. First and second year, third year, I have to go out and look, see that it's still alive, and after the third year, it's it's over. I don't okay. check anymore. So when we charge people to replant trees, do we actually execute on that provision of the... So the town has a shade tree fund, and it's right out there by the clerk's office, and that's the fund that we're using. We're asking people if they want, want to do a volunteer donation to the Shade Tree Fund, which is um, $300 on that literature, but we're only asking for $250 because they're not getting a plaque saying that they donated to the Shade Tree Fund. Um, right. I guess for the extra $50. But Bob Keating, when he was here, helped me put this together, and, um, they they need two hundred and fifty dollars for the forestry department to plant a tree, and it mm -hmm. goes into a fund dedicated to buying trees. Okay, well, I was I was yeah. just curious, Chuck, and, I, yeah. and I, I'm so not I think that I'm not questioning the intent or the integrity of the plan. I think it's a great program. Well, you asked, is I'm just wondering how do we assure actually, it's happening? How do we know that you know if somebody if homeowner X on Street Y cuts down some trees and says, no, here's five hundred dollars, go plant two trees wherever you want would we do that's not how it works though it just goes into a fund and then yeah so it's 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 earmarked for to buy trees how shrubs can, can, for I, the can I kind of think can I just add something you know when we were talking about this I, I was looking at these trees and I'm thinking my goodness these people are going to be spending <laughs> 1200 and you were saying because of the storms this year, these companies are, require, are asking like 3500 per tree. Which well, but if you have this many, they'll, they, 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 they reduce the price considerably. If they get their equipment on site, they can take down multiple trees. It's a fraction of the cost per tree. It, it can get low. It can get lower. I'm just saying that's what they'll usually do. Uh, these yeah, trees are huge, this but is, this, this is at least a thirty-five hundred dollars. You're talking yeah. about the the huge. Oh, you mean for all the trees. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Not per, not per tree. Not if they cut. It's down, almost like oh, five hundred dollars. That's nothing compared to the thirty-five hundred I have to spend to take these down. It's almost like an incentive, like carte, carte blanche, especially if they're coming in with even more trees to take down. That, that's where I'm kind of going with some of my thought about this. It's like, why wouldn't they? And I've heard <coughs> from my neighbor who was a tree guy, oh, yeah. or, or the, ge the gentleman on my street that cut down trees, and he said, yeah, well, yeah, fine us, you know, pay that. It's nothing compared to what I had to pay to take down the tree. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't mind <laughs> if we thought about the cost of replacement of each tree that is taken down. You know, what would it cost for you to buy a replacement tree? An average replacement tree that we're looking at it would be more than 500, right? No, it wouldn't. Well, Bob said that they can plant a tree for 250 bucks. That's probably a sad Get a one, tree right? and plant a tree. That's, yeah, but that's, that's one a tree. small caliber yeah. tree. That's mm -hmm. that's. A it is a small caliber tree, and you're talking significant habitat that we're. You well, know. it's a tree that we have. It's a three-inch caliber tree. When when we oh, is that big? work work okay. through that, yeah. right. ten to fifteen feet tall. So they think they can get the tree and have their crew plant it. This isn't about having a landscaping crew, which would probably be five hundred bucks, five hundred and fifty bucks, or something like that, to plant that same tree. But the town can do it for two fifty, and probably two hundred of that's going to the tree. Well, if that's reasonable and that's what the town says their embedded costs are to do it, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But if you buy a landscape tree that's any size, they're not five. 500 bucks. They're considerably more money, like you were saying. But if that's what the town says they can do it for. I think we would, I think our mindset at the time when we were establishing this is, oh, you know, this is tough on a single family home, but we're getting, we're getting them to get quotes from these tree people and I, you know, I said to Chuck, I said, this is going to be expensive to take these trees down. I understand you're saying that 
you know, you, you get the crane out there. And it, I thought you were saying it was thirty-five dollars per tree. No. Oh, for all of them. Yes, that makes more sense. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, if it was one. One tree. It could be thirty five hundred dollars for one tree once you get all the equipment out there, but yes. we'll, we'll take I mean, down the other eight for free. Out there. Right. Some, something free. like that. I mean yeah. the guy that has one tree to take down, he's gonna be paying, you know, through the nose. Right. But here, here the policy is based on one to one replacement or leaving habitat. So we have the ten to fifteen foot stump for habitat that only works out in if there's a tree in the woods that's on their property but it's leaning towards the house. That's when that's used. Yeah, they'll cut the tree, and if it falls down, it won't fall out of the woods onto the onto the property. So I've seen that used that way. It's seldom used, but it is used. Planting happens a lot. People like, you know, they can plant. You can go to Home Depot, and you could significantly reduce the cost of that two hundred and fifty dollars to down to I don't know, under a hundred. Plant it yourself. Um, and then people also like the, hey, I'm done with it, 250 bucks, capped at 500. And that's the one to one replacement. It goes into the tree fund policy, and the tree fund policy is based on you're giving us money, we're planting a tree for you. That's how it works. Um, but Chuck, you, you're saying that these, that but recently, we're coming, we're getting uh, recently, an indication yeah. that people are coming in with how many trees? Lots of them, and the five hundred dollars to me just doesn't apply. Yeah, recently we're getting a few applications about people actually just wanting to clear their whole lot to be done with it, and I don't think that's what anyone was thinking about when we first started. But we which, which they can do if they want if they're outside any kind of a hundred foot buffer zone. They well, that's could. What I, that's right. what I take issue with. That's my main issue with this particular project. I mean, you're saying there are only two of these trees that are within the twenty five foot. Thirty five foot. Thirty five foot. Um, all of them within the hundred foot. All within. All of them are within the hundred foot. Um, so we're. But what what they've done, what the trees have done, and the maturity level of these trees up to this point is they've established under those trees, and within those trees, a certain habitat space. But it's grass. No, but the trees themselves, the canopy and the canopy, the canopy has and the, value. The canopy has value. So, um, to just wholesale remove that, um, I, I have a big problem approving that. I, I'm, I'm a little bit more on board with a couple selective removals that Dave was talking about. That doesn't take you know, three quarters of the trees out. Um. Well, I, I, I think that's us, whoever, I know that um, the commission approved this and the, the commission may at its sole discretion apply a different standard when conditions warrant. I think that's why that was in there and you know, I, I did say that I would apply the standards based on um, you know, what I've done in the past, and if it becomes a situation like this where there's a lot of trees, that the commission has to weigh in on it. So that's why you're talking about it now. Yeah. I I don't know I I don't know what you're going to do, but it, it it is different, and there's two or three more coming in <coughs> where we're going to be clearing all the trees out. One of the questions that kind of bugs me or gets to me a little bit is we've got X thousands of trees that are inside the 100 foot buffer and if 50 people came in and said I want to take one tree down we'd say okay no problem so if somebody comes in and says I want to take 10 down or 5 down it's, it's an issue and I can understand why because it's a concentrated area and it seems like well if everybody did this then we would take down 5,000 trees <laughs> um, and that's obviously not what we want to have happen here. But I, I don't know that how it, it's 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 certainly a, a local habitat of sorts, and the canopy is has has it's there for a reason. I mean, it's uh, and I, I I hate to see trees cut down unnecessarily myself, but I'm also saying, yeah, okay, what if we took down five of these trees instead of twelve, and he had ample boost in his available free space in his backyard. 
that make it less, less egregious from our perspective, or does that make it more palatable for us? Because I don't disagree with Dave's comment, and I don't necessarily want to see him take down all the trees either. It's just where's the where's the middle ground? Well, that's where, what we where's where's the where's the where's the where's the, where's the thing that makes sense for us and what we're trying to accomplish, especially in light of our tree policy. I'd say the trees closest to the resource area would um, have the most value. They certainly would. Um, Chuck, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Chuck, could you, do you have some idea of how many of those trees would stay if um, we set a 50 foot limit? Not the 20, not the 30, the 25? Yeah, we'll, I'll just. Um, Are you talking about a 50 foot buffer zone? Yeah. So it's 35? I mean, the thing is, that's part of a, a mature canopy area. The only. Is that, is that line I see going? Why is this going on? So that should be 50 feet. The line you have there now? Yeah. I think it gets closer. Let me just change this back. What is that line that's that just touches the corner of the rectangle lot? Is that the what is that? This line here? Nope. The other one that, that goes from top to bottom in the picture, but outside that rectangle, right there. Here. Yeah. What's that? It's like a stream. Is that a? That looks like a property, property line. line. Back property line. Yeah. That's a weird looking. It's no, I, I've got one. I've got one too. Okay. It even has, no. yeah, it does. It's got turning. It's oh, so this is there's a turning point. Like property lines here, and this property line goes to this house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. And this is part of, and that's another lot. Um, I thought you were say that was the the wet line, but it's obviously not. You know, how how accurate do you think this? This, Where is the this schematic is here. It's that green hashed area. To, okay, to, to where these trees are. I. Oh, that's. No, I'm going to say it's not. It's not accurate. No. It's not accurate, but it's, it's 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 very general. But I couldn't even measure off that. I couldn't compare. There was nothing there to compare any and get some sort of base. To so when you look at the you know when you look at the bird's eye view, there the trees are, are kind of at an angle, so it's kind of hard to uh, to yeah, see them. But if uh, what I was saying is there's 11 trees here, and if you would look at like the five that are kind of in the middle here as to allow those to be removed but maintain the re remainder of those that are there you know that might be a you're saying you keep know, the 18 inch and the 26 over here 18 26 and, and 15 okay. the 24 the 21 and the 22. Now i was thinking of something similar only taking the 18 and take these and leave everything in the 35 yeah you know, and yep. just leave those two back in the corner but again you could kind of he's got a 350 foot yard how much space do right. you need <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Well, that's that's how we can't make our decision, though. We have to make right. it based I, on yeah. habitat and right. conservation. Right. 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 I get it. I know. It's, but it, <laughs> it's tough not to consider that when you see, oh, well, that's like a football field worth of space. Yeah. It's well, like, how much fun do you need? It's his lands, his castle, you know. His wife's going to put in a daycare center. I know oh, she is. Oh. Maybe they want to put a soccer field back there. They <laughs> could. Well, we had another thought, too. <laughs> What's that? There, there could be other future options for the back part of the property. I mean, that right. move, removing those trees could make it less cumbersome to acquire the permitting that is needed. But that wasn't presented. We're only looking yeah. at the trees tonight. But you know. Well, the, that house already has, looks like it already has a garage and another back building there. So are they kind of going at this because it would be easiest to get the, the crane and everything in while they're taking that other house down to remove these trees? Is um, that the thought? Oh, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I know. don't know how the access would work. It, it's Yeah, they could have full access on the property that they're going to put the house in. Yeah. Um, well, is the guy on Libby Ave in this house with the trees he wants to remove related to the guys in the houses mm -hmm. on Plymouth Street? Mm. I think, uh, you mean lip, uh, A on Street? On E Street. Oh, I'm sorry, on A Street? Yes. Well, you know, he was talking about something that was related to him. I'm not sure the pool people are related to him. He's 
I don't know. I don't know. I Maybe think, you heard that. I think it was. Um, and then his father-in-law lives right down the end of A Street. And one of those trees, the 26-inch one, I think that's the one. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, right, right there. There are two. Yeah, well, there's one tree, tree right in, here. and it's, tree. yeah, that's the 26-inch one. And then there's one tree in his property. There's a couple right here that he wants to take down. Yeah. Yeah, but and, and we determine those are in the 100 foot, but pretty close to like 85 to 90, 80, between 85 and 100 feet away. You know, maybe even closer to 90 and 100 feet away. But they're in the they're in the buffer. Do you see? Oh, here are the trees right here, right along this yeah. line. If if you scroll that up a little bit, Chuck, like yeah, so it goes up to uh, Libby Ave. Uh, keep going. So if you go at the end of of uh, B Street, see that piece of. It looks like a, an empty lot there. It's just where it says 20, 29. 29 128. Yeah. I wonder, looks like there's right a shed away. or something there. You know, I there's wonder a lot they, of leaf, litter, off, leaf like, litter right there. You know, I wonder if that, that even belongs to that, that property there. So I did Number talk 42. to the engineering department and they, their thought was it was a road layout. Oh, with like I got B you. Street. But there's a couple of options. Paper Street, it could belong to the neighbors on either side. It could be the developer kept that land. He, they don't think it's, it, they actually, they mentioned it could be owned by the town, but they didn't think, think that that was possible. Um, so those are, the, those are the three options. So it wasn't conclusive of who owns it. Huh. There's no record There must on be it? able to find Well, there is, but we didn't, yeah, okay. you know, spend town time to figure out who owns that land, you know. Uh, so it, I would, I would, my guess is it's Paper Street and both parties own to the center. I mean, that, that's how it, how this guy is using it with the, with the leaf debris that's there. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's a fence. It's open. There's uh -oh. just a ton of leaves there. Double fence. Yeah. yeah. A lot of leaves. A lot of leaves. What else are you going to do with them? you got to throw them in an unoccupied piece of property. They absorb the water, don't they? Bob? It's a slug farm. Yeah. Bob? It's, it's, uh, well, you know, it's... So what are we going to do with this one? I, I'm not comfortable with the wholesale cutting of, of all those trees. Good. So and, Steve, and, and Steve I'm, said that he didn't... He said he preferred getting the, it through on the policy, but if he had to go through a request for determination, he would do that. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's obviously the thing that's going to give it the most visibility to the most commission members. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear if he has a more strategic, purposeful. But in the interest of just. Would you allow any trees to be cut down at this point without a request for determination of applicability or since it's been brought up and we want to kind of close the loop on what we're going to do with our policy that now this is, that's the only way you would entertain any trees being taken down? I would permit one to be taken down. I'd permit for five being in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I, don't. I don't know well, what five, but maybe you could uh, show me and hand that back to me. Um, or, or just maybe pass it around to everyone, because <laughs> that might Which be one? that might be acceptable. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Well, and plus, I mean, I, I I know that this may not be the popular choice, but that twenty-six inch that's on his father-in-law's property or something—that's entangled in the fence. Yeah. yeah. You know they're going to want that done. Well, I think that that because it's entangled in the fence, it would be one that. But what, what yeah, I was going is I like may, maybe in the art of negotiation, mm -hmm. or trying to get to a reasonable, okay, but we want this one. Say, so, well, then we want this one. Well, it what would he be reasonable? And then also, we, well, it, we have to make our decision based on. Well, if our mandate of 
Well, the, the, well the, if we had rules that would, would govern this, we, it would be pretty easy. The father-in-law has taken down three trees. He could eliminate all three trees on his property and not be outside of what anyone else has done with our tree policy. So I don't think that we really need to get too... You know, we don't have to like really search what what would happen with number four, number a, a street. Because that was the father-in-law, <clears throat> number four. He's got three trees. I mean, that's no more than anyone else has taken so down. So the twenty-six. He would have to pay for two or replant two. So the twenty-six yeah, inch one. Seems like that's, that's the work. one. That, that's not right next to his fence. That's his, and it's not, it's right in his fence. The 26 inch I one? thought it was his, yeah. Well, it's on this property. Oh, so yeah. the fence has got to be on the line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so then he has two he's going to take Yeah, down. this one. Yeah, that one. <sighs> well, hey, it's, can you, it's can you show um, the... Aerial, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see if I can... They also have this here. I don't know if this will help anybody. Oh, yeah, I've got angle. that up. You know, the CIA and... And my M6 have got these really great satellite cameras that you can... <laughs> no, it's oh, not helping. It's almost three right days. Right on yeah, I, There's the pool. No. I yeah. can't. I thought there was Chuck, a way do you to, like, have the other one that just got the stick? You're trying to get directly over it, and sometimes you can't, because where the, where the satellite is, it takes the pictures. It's downrange about 400 exactly. miles. We need Google Earth to go into his backyard. Well, I, I try. I we use this all the that. time, and you get just so close to the Earth, what happens is that, that, that I guess, the parallax angle, it starts to become very noticeable, and you try to get it back straight over it, and it, it just stops at some point. Chuck, I think... It is that 20. I have the 26. Doesn't it look like there's one right here? Yeah, there is. I can see the fence going like that. So if you straighten the fence. Oh, up. this one. Yeah. I and mean, so do you sure. think this one is this one? Or no, this could be. Remember there was one like right near the pool that was an issue. I'm not sure I'm seeing it here. There's something right there that was big. Yeah, there was one there, yeah. So this is almost like a straight shot down, and that so that might be. I mean, we're not in the survey business. I mean, it's, it's the fence is going this way. So if you wanted to call that on this guy's property because the fence goes like that, then that's all. That's fine with me. Oh, you're saying that this representation, the 26, may actually be here. Hmm. Okay. We don't know. That's a good point. Okay. Is that? Is that a um, spruce that's on the other side of this pole? Uh, that the there? paper street? No, on the paper street there, right there. That is that just a jumble of that, right there? There's a cluster of pine trees right okay. there. Um, I didn't see a spruce. Did you? I wasn't focusing on that. So area. Chuck, I saw you write, drawing some lines. Did you get to the 50 foot distance roughly? It it became odd. It then I, I think it's distorted, but I'll, I'll show you one mark at, like one your mark best, at 50 feet. Just your best guess. It's really not. And it's, I think the fence was right there. So that really doesn't, even with the 50 feet, like half of those trees are outside of it. I think this tree is so well, if this is 100 feet. feet. And this is going to be 50 feet. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, point. I think 50 feet would have been. Yeah, because the wide is 100 feet. This wide, is right? further here. Right. I mean, this is. This is. Let me get back a little bit. But that's, you know. And we're not digging through like leaf litter and whatnot. So and there's there's a lot of leaf litter right here, and there's a lot. I think right there, there's a fence there, and it's like a lot right there. 
Uh, I'm not comfortable with the way you're drawing it 50 feet either because when you keep coming up that property line yeah. near um, the other property, there was a weapon back there. Like, closer. Wasn't there a weapon back here? Chuck? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not just there, it's also in here too. It shows it coming up there, but you can also, with this tool, you can turn on the topography so and you can see that like 50, you know, maybe feet. that line works. I don't think it would but be this high. these, I think, were over then something back here. Okay. okay. You know, well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm thinking one, two, three, the 36, the 16, and the 26. I think these two are out. Now, what's the age of these trees? What? 28 years old. <laughs> what? Well, there's one way to find out. We just cut them down and count the range. <laughs> we could. Uh, they, they weren't enormous, which they can get, like, really big. They were, like, I thought 30. they were pretty you significant. Think, you think they were 24 to 32 dBH? Yeah. So a lot of them were just a, like the 24 to 30, you know, something like that, 28. Well, this, I'm this sticking with 28 years old. 28 years old, what, for these trees he wants to take down in his backyard? I don't know, do you think they're 60 years old? They're a lot, they're more than 28 years old. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's right. <sighs> the, this I have a, hold on. Go ahead. No, I just, I, 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 I have a tree in front of my house that's grown prodigiously. And it's an oak. Oh, it's maple. It's maple. And it's, it's, it, it was five years old when I bought the house, and now it's 25 years old. And it's, it's not as big as some of the dimensions of trees on this drawing. It's, it's trunk. You put a tape around it and divide by three. I don't know. I'm going to guess it's probably, they're probably 14, 15. maybe 14 inches, maybe 16 inches in this diameter. Uh, this is a red maple. Is this circumference in this di uh, the measurements? This is the diameter. Yes. No, 36 inches. That's circumference? So that's circumference. You want to know how big the diameter is? Just divide by three. I'll give you a rough idea. It's a 12 inch diameter tree. <coughs> That's probably a 28 or a 30 year old tree. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I would say that they were old, especially the 36 inch one. Because I've got one, I've got a, my husband <laughs> so got a red maple as a sapling, and it's in. The, the corner and it's about the size of that but he built the house in 65 so it, it, it's more than 28 years old it's like 50 but this is but again these these the measure, the measurements are circumferences of trees they're not Diameter. diameters okay so I found this funky little formula I don't know if it's gonna give me anything so this is what a red red oak times four. 45 years old, maybe, for that red oak. 46, it's a guess. Also depends on where they grow. Yeah, I'd put it more than, it's not be in the ballpark. Not 28, but more 40 plus. These could be in the ballpark. Um, there is, uh, um, I can't find the history of this. this so, doesn't sound like we have a, a fixed plan, but we're willing to consider yeah. some reduced number of trees. Um, I'd like to know what their intent is, and that could help. So if he just cuts down all these trees, what, what's our, we slap on the wrist with a $500 fine, right? We, we can a $500 fine. Yeah, you could fine. We could issue a, a penalty. 
<laughs> if you cut down the trees, is not, not inside. Authorized. We're not held to the 500. It's not. But it's unauthorized work within our buffer zone. It's but our I think it would be a measure that we would use to help us find some. What do you think realistically we would do? Just curious. I think realistically, if you just cut them down, probably make them plant them, replant them. I, I think so. No. He doesn't re does he have to replant them on his property? Yeah, in the buffer zone. Well, that's if he replants the trees. If he gives the 500 to right. the tree replacement policy, then it goes to the town and they plant they don't have to they plant, see fit. They don't have to plant on their property. Well, that's it, what I meant. So it goes out of their hands right. into our replacement but policy. But he could plant them on his property. Well, yes, he could. Yeah. And yeah. we do have in the tree policy, if he didn't want to pick a tree, he could pick a couple of shrubs in yeah. lieu of a tree. Sure, right. You right. know, and it could change the dynamic. You know, again, I want to know if, is he looking for a change in dynamics of his backyard? And we're trying to preserve the habitat some habitat value in fact. let me just say that no they, there is no thought of preservation is to cut down those trees that was okay pretty, that's I pretty, can't I can't wholesale agree to that th yeah but that is what <laughs> we w w that was what was conveyed to us okay. right Chuck to have mm -hmm. yeah I want to cut yes. down the trees scary I just can't agree to that and this is Steve O'Neill? Yes. His family? I thought he lived in North Reading. Hold on. Steve O'Neill's the builder. He's the builder and representing the, the owners. Okay, so Steve O'Neill doesn't live on that street. That's not his family. No. no. Okay. Doesn't matter. He's, well, he's going to be no, doing No, it doesn't, the, but I thought somebody said that's what he lived His father-in-law is at the end of Oh, his father-in-law. I knew there yeah. was a relationship. Yes. Okay, all right. Who is the um, town electrician. Okay. So are we uh, of the opinion to request that they file an RDA? I think that's a good yeah. We next got to step that, and we were just wondering if that. you would accept if they took down five trees, if that could be under the policy, or do you want this just which, to be which an RDA five? now that we now which, that we which five? Do we pick which which five, or um, do they? Well, well five we, is five. I think we've just well, had no, a discussion with him. Matters. With the homeowner. Well, five outside of the they pick five so. trees and then we could review it. Right. But what I'm saying is if they pick five trees, isn't it back into the tree policy and then it would be more or less something that I would be taking care of? Sure. I mean, it, yeah. why, it can't be, we can't just, because he's asking he's for asked all to the take trees. down 12 trees, now we have to have more review on it if he agrees to take five down. But one of the biggest things that you said in the beginning is that you thought that he was between the 25 and 35 foot Six, line eight, away ten, from the wetland. So anything that's between the 25 and 35 foot line, I think, should be kind of taken off the table anyway. Well, inside the 25 foot line, yeah. it should be taken off the table. So in, in, in order for you to find that out, they'd have to do an IDA. So but that's where I think the discussion with the applicant is germane to what is going to be our ultimate decision as to what we're comfortable with them doing on the lot. If I recall, Chuck, you said the light area is all inside 35 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah, so these four are definitely in 35. That's but it's not line. accurate. We, we were, when we were out there, only the two closest ones to the edge of the fence. 21 and the 24. Are going to be, the right. other two are, were they just on the line? They 21, 22, or 21, 24? 21, 24. Yeah, maybe okay. that's the 50 line. <laughs> Well, Maybe I'm that shading is 50. Well, here it is back in, it's not, that's not Some doesn't make sense. years ago, but here it's 1995. Oh yeah, this doesn't make sense. This, 20. this is the 35 foot line here? No. Yeah, but I had to draw it in. When we went out there, it looked like the 35 foot line was probably got those just out? inside. Oh. Right, don't, so, don't forget so that these... Yeah. The location of these trees yeah. are not accurate. Yeah. No, they're yeah. just well, these are way off, I think. That's what he just said when he went out there and imagined it. It was just these two trees inside the 35 foot, not these two. Which would make sense if you were at the contrary. <coughs> but who knows? Yeah. Chuck, what's the date on that? It was. That's 1995. So it was the 2221? It was only two trees that were inside the 35 foot, and there was a great distance between where we put the 35 foot line and the next two trees. Meaning, even if we were off by about five feet, it's you know it's still. Oh, so, so I couldn't even make a close call. It wasn't that close. Mm -hmm. 
Well, anyways, this is this area here is the trees. There's a pool there still yep. in 1995. This is as far as it goes back. Same pool. Same pools. Yeah, let's try right here. 2001. Some more trees. Oh, that is. Oh, this is nice. So it's it's. Yeah, the trees are there. Yep. Yeah. This this thing goes back to the wind, 95? 1995, yeah. That's it. Sometimes it goes back into the 60s, but not, not this time. Okay. Well, I don't think those, those trees have been... There, it looks like on this picture there was a little bit more. Yeah. Right, right up front, but then it was cleared out. And you can tell someone just started raking and it's all grass underneath it's not leaf, leaf litter or anything I think they had brush and small it. saplings understory there and they just cleared it out and now it's just left with big trees I, I, I would that cluster I would go for getting some additional information from the applicant just as to what they would like to do and, and then kind of go from there okay and maybe get a little bit better idea as to where the the uh, BBW is there. Um, uh, without doing a full wetlands delineation and then go from there. Yeah, we won't need a wetlands delineation. It's pretty clear. This is, it's it's a drop off. I mean, it's going to be at the base. Okay. The only thing that's the problem is the leaf leaves are in the way. But yep. Yeah. It is what it is. What was what was the thought on the five trees? Since we're they take down, I, I don't even know why that's going to be an option. They might say no. We want them all down. I don't know. It's worth it. With a cap of five hundred dollars for five mature trees, I think. Oh well, yeah, they'd have to do the policy with the five trees. Well, I mean, we established the policy. We can't backpedal now and say, "Well, wait a minute." You well, know, we, we, have, we have this district, we have discretion. Policy case. We have discretion. Yeah, so this is why I, un I highlighted the. Uh, That's not we could the way call the this an yeah. Yeah, so this was on the original policy, and they're calling that out. Or, or everyone's calling it out because we haven't seen, you know, twelve healthy trees being cut down before. So it was right. That's why I said I, that's why I'm bringing it to the commission. I mean, you guys can discuss. I, I will say, if all these trees were, well, I think that that right there, that health. sentence that's in there is in the replacement <coughs> part, the replacement ratio. I think that's where that comes in. This is about cutting them down, not replacing them. That's where we're struggling right now is to, to what we are allowing these people to cut down. And the policy states that you have to have a, 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 a tree person come in and give the reason why you want to cut the trees down. And at this point, there's, these trees are, are healthy. Yeah. So it doesn't really meet with the criteria of why they're, you know, whether it's endangering uh, property of uh, uh, human beings as to why they want to cut the trees down. They want to do it for basically landscaping purposes. And that's really not that clearly deline delineated in our tree policy about cutting down trees that are healthy trees that are within the, the 100 foot resource area. And I think that's the discussion that we, we want to try to right. carve out also as part of this. Yeah. You know, no, I don't, what's, I don't disagree what with you. What are we you. looking at here? I mean, yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um, but I mean, it was hard enough to get it to this point. Yep. We said mm -hmm. we got something and we're going to work on it. And here's the first time that, you know, something's been highlighted that really wasn't uh, something we thought of. But if you have, let's say, just play devil's advocate for a moment, they have 11 trees here. And if they came in and said, okay, we'd like to cut down and, and just saying that there is no, these are all within the 100 foot, they're outside the 25 foot, all 11 of these trees. And if they come in and said, okay, these are outside the 25 foot line, I'd like to cut all 11 of these trees down and I'm gonna replace 11, those 11 trees with 11 tr additional trees and 20 bushes. Where does that leave us as a commission? No, I think that's fine. That would be fine. Yeah. That's so, that, that would be it's, fine. It's, that's like you a, know the, the yeah. core 
Uh, right. We, our, our core belief is that it's a replacement policy. Right. So if they do replace it, they, they could also come in and say, look, we want to cut down the trees and we'll just pay you 250 bucks for every tree. Right. That's okay also. Right. Because we know that we're going to get those trees planted somewhere else. That's why I think it's it's we need to get a little bit more information from the applicant as to where they really willing to go with this. Um, well, if that's the case, then Steve O'Neill should just say, yeah, you can cut them down. It's $250 a tree. Additional, yeah. Period. 3500 bucks to take them down, $250 a tree. You're inside the 100-foot buffer zone. Weigh yourself out. But you money. can't touch the two and the 25 But you foot. can't touch the two and the 35 foot. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. I mean, if that's what the policy says, then that's really what we're, right, we're so kind of squeezed into that corner. Yeah. All right. Next. That's, that's 2500 right, on top of the 3500 That's a pretty expensive day in your backyard to see if yeah. can run around and throw a ball at each other. But yes, hey, I mean, this the backyard. Some people that had trees falling in their backyard would be would have been very willing to pay that money to get the trees off their roof and off their car a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, no. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's <coughs> Oh. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? We don't. We don't have. Uh, okay. Nothing else come in, and I didn't have a chance to finish up the minutes. All right. So, uh, what's the uh, uh, order conditions? Is that going to be uh, for Beaver Road? Is that going to be? Uh, there's no, that was just uh, no, a site I'm visit. Still, that's order conditions. Certificate of compliance, is that, will they get that for that, or they, is that something that's going to be just... They're holding off on that, and I had that on our, I don't have the second page, so I, I, think I did have it at one point on the site visits. And what happened was a lot, we got a lot of calls during those last rainstorms, and everyone was nervous about the height of that impoundment. We think it was because they saw it the fir for the first time being up so high and being up so high for so long. And Ryan went out there and I went out there with uh, one of the other engineers and we all determined that it did exactly what it, they said it would do. That height only went to the culverts or a little bit inside each nice. culvert. Yep. So it didn't go any yeah. further, but it was higher than it no. had been in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Is that done with the gas company did their rework? Yeah. 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 Well, the, uh, was there any any? Dirt? I haven't been there since uh, in the in the uh, like when we had that thaw in January. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised to see there was all the the gravel was scoured right off of those blocks. Yeah. I was surprised to see that. I didn't think that that was going to. They happen. don't have their certificate of compliance yet. So. Yeah. Not, well, we've had some. It was an unusual year. I mean, yeah. There was a lot yeah. of swift and a lot of rain and. Yeah. Well, then we had those two beautiful weeks in February, and then it went down to zero for a month. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why would anybody live here? I know. I ask myself that all the time. We make a motion to adjourn. Any other information? Any other news? Any other discussion no. items? No. We make a motion no. to adjourn. Do I hear a second? A second. All those in favor?